today's guest is Sasha Dents. She's one of these people that you meet from time to time who have such a broad range of knowledge and a huge heart. And they're able to integrate several different topics and themes into our current situation of how we're living today, what the problems and challenges are, and what the solutions can be. So there's no way to really describe the conversation you're about to watch other than please just watch it and enjoy. Having seen my, my kids bring in all kinds of other kids, and even when the, the families are sort of working, they're not working, there's an incredible amount of misery in us who have achieved the American dream, family breakdown, but the kids are in very, very bad shape. Having you know taught for 20 years, I can say that a number of students and essays, because I, ess I got essays, right? And what they were saying was, these are educated, well-fed nutrition. Um, they have their vaccines. They've got mm -hmm. they <clears throat> everything is is great. They are athletic. They know they have to exercise, and they're morally feral. They have no idea what uh, if I have to do the right thing. Hmm. Plato said, "To know the good is to do the good." What if you know the good and then find out in that moment, hey, I can't do the good. I don't have the moral muscle. I haven't developed the virtue hmm. to be able to do that. See, in the pre-modern world, the idea was a completely different understanding of being a human being. You, you uh, were born, and then, you, as I said, you adapted to reality. But the point was, you saw yourself as a biological part and a spiritual part, and the two come together to, to make this hybrid mongrel species. Um, but this was supposed to help this. By the biological thing, by disciplining the spiritual part of it, was to learn how to love in a way, um, through limits, through incredible limits, learn how to li love without limits, hmm. unconditionally. And then you'd be ready to be with God. Hmm. You could at least get in the front door. Because God was a love that was so unbounded and so limitless and so completely unhuman mm -hmm. that if you didn't have anything in common with that, I mean, and this goes with the uh, Tao, the way of the Tao, mm -hmm. then you, 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 you couldn't get together if there was nothing in you that was like that. So virtue was important. Virtue is what you need to do to do the right thing to learn to love. But it's not something you just have because you want it. <laughs> it needs to be developed. So we have these souls, as I was saying, that are flabby, that have never exercised mm -hmm. um, and never seen it as being something that's important. And mm -hmm. the education system is increasingly... I mean, when I started in 1983, we still had some notion, for example, in literature that teaching the great books was teaching wisdom. Wisdom is different from acquiring power through knowledge. Yes. <laughs> right? So getting tons of information and getting tons of knowledge makes you powerful. Mm -hmm. It does. And having a very, very high IQ makes you incredibly powerful. So we, we've been selecting for that. Mm -hmm. We haven't been selecting for this. Mm -hmm. Because this will say, no, you have to get small. You have to get minimal. You have to uh, get rid of the power you have. Because you can't be... Basically, what happened in the modern age is the human animal cannot be trusted with the kind of power it got. If, you, if I can refer to Lord of the Rings, uh, we can't have the ring. Even the best among us. The best among us know, like Gandalf said, you can't give it to me. I may begin to use it with, you know, virtuous intentions, with uh, altruistic hopes, but eventually. And that comes out of the idea of original sin, mm -hmm. that there's something in us that's human that it doesn't matter what we try to do that's good. Mm -hmm. We've tried utopian projects now for a, lo a while, eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, well, you know, we can look at them, Third Reich. These were attempts at saying we can create heaven on earth just through social engineering and uh, our, our own big, huge brains. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the modern human being is. It's focused on the brain. A, f a fleshy machine with a big brain. Yeah. So that model is now supplanted the idea of the soul and the body. Yeah. And this big brain will dominate biology, just like it will dominate ecology. Mm -hmm. It will 
get rid of the parts it doesn't like and change the parts it wants and use the parts as a kind of life support system for this big brain that it likes. So to answer your question, to come back to that, and I'm sorry that no, this is I think it begins good. on the ground. I think it begins with us saying, no, I will get rid of what I, the luxury. I will get rid of all of the incredibly unbelievable historical it's just over the top magnitude of excess that 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 we live in and it's really hard to do like it's just like it's you're participating in it when you, even when you don't want to um and then there's part of you that wants to of course there is because and this is another important point this pre-modern suffering suffering was accepted Mm -hmm. because he didn't have much choice, but also because it was seen as useful. It helped in this project of becoming virtuous, of loving everybody and everything. Without suffering, you can't do that. It can't happen. So it, had, it, it was purposeful suffering. So the three, what I call the three S's, suffering, sacrifice, and service were the goal. And it's, so that when you knew the right thing, you could do the right thing. Um, of course, those three things are forbidden. If you mention the value of suffering, hmm. <laughs> no, yeah. we just but, get rid of it. But isn't it ironic, as part of our national narrative right now, and it's an ad campaign running through mainstream media, um, but you can find it a lot of other places, that food security is a major issue in this country. And the ad will talk about 4 million people in Canada suffer from food challenges. They can't access good, healthy food. Four million people at a time when we're supposedly at a peak of all of the benefits of all the technology and all the energy that's gone on before. Yeah. So our embracing suffering, I mean, it's still there, <laughs> you know, there, there's all kinds of it around, but, I know, but our, per of our it. perception of it is radically different. Yes. And how we distance ourselves yes. from it is radically different. It's there to be fixed. Yeah, as opposed to embraced. And, yes. And that's a whole other energy. Exactly, exactly. Because the point here now, if, again, if I can refer to this modern project, is to have an enjoyable time here on Earth hmm. for as long as possible, hmm. to maximize happiness here. And then, like Dr. Faustus, what comes after, there's nothing after, right? Hmm. It doesn't matter what we do. We're not going to be held to account. Hmm. There's no authority no authority anymore in the earth that's imposing anything, and no authority that's transcendent that we will then answer to. Mm -hmm. So if you get rid of those authorities, it was kind of, what it was kind of like was a teenage rebellion. In 14th century, 15th century, sorry. <laughs> we kind of said no to the two parents mm -hmm. that we had, the planet earth and God. Said, uh-uh. And they could legitimately look at the way that that was revealed with, you know, in the church and in, and in the monarchy and all the rest of it as corrupt because, you know, they were, they were people. Wherever you have people, <laughs> doesn't matter how good or virtuous something is, mm -hmm. it eventually becomes somebody in any way is going to be corrupt. So they, that is always an excuse to then say, we're going to get rid of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now the idea is to, is to live here now as best you can and don't care about where you're going because you're not going anywhere um, and that's so radically different that's such a change how do we change our mindset to something resembling what it was before yeah or, or integrating from other cultures because some of that echoes or has resonance with first nations or yes. native culture yes some of that has uh, resonance with Taoism. yes no matter where you go there you are you know yeah. uh, the energy of being present and yeah. feeling that connection with being present and allowing transcendence or shifts to occur under those conditions as opposed to, um, I have a goal, I'm going to map out my four-year business plan and I'm going to attain my goal, which is all power-based, um, ego-driven. Yes. So your invitation is to look at economies, political systems, environmental systems, not as how we've always done it for four or five hundred years, but and knowing that here is a way we need to shift in order to give our children and grandchildren something a bit better than the mess we've created. But what it means for individuals is I'm going to have to give up that job to be with these kids. 
Because human beings, one of the facts of biology, have this incredibly long childhood, <laughs> right? They do now. We are dependent. <laughs> and it's getting even longer in yeah. a way. And that's, again, irony. The more modernized we get, the, the weaker we get yeah, instead of stronger. I, well, well, isn't there a, one of the storylines I'm thinking of before? In around World War One, there was no notion of a teenager. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in and around World War II, there was the beginnings of a notion of a teenager. Now, when applying for government dollars, most any places, a youth will be 29 and under. <laughs> yeah, you need so much education. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know, everybody's kids, like they have like two, three, four degrees, like, or, or, or certificates, you know, that we, you need to have so much. And then you need experience, which means you need to volunteer. And it's incredibly expensive. Hmm. unbelievably expensive hmm. and so only a tiny few i mean the problem with the the education system that we have is that it's starting in kindergarten you said well you're groomed to become an academic the successful ones are the ones who can acquire this vast amount of knowledge because they have this iq and they they're able to do it successfully they also have the work ethic um they're the ones who are going to be successful and they are and they're going to have careers men and women who do that um the rest of you, uh, you're going to have to just adapt to this. This is the new normal. And uh, the essays I've gotten, you know, the kids who are suicidal, I am not an academic. I must be an academic. I have to be an academic, but I'm not an academic. I'm inferior because I'm not, I don't have a above average IQ. I just don't, I can't convince my parents of that because they know that to get that job. Instead of saying to them, look, 2% of you will have careers. The rest of you will have jobs. Historically, jobs have just paid the rent if you've had them. Mm. And what's made life meaningful are people and music yeah. and art and get-togethers and children and doing the hard labor of reality. Yeah. And then seeing what virtue looks like because it shines in the dark. Yeah. It's... When you see somebody who's virtuous, and they're so rare, then you go, oh yeah, that was worth it. It was worth it. But we have to then say, I have to give up this. I have to give up that. I have to accept my biology. I mean, because the feminist revolution just adopted the same uh, script. It just said, well, you know, we're going to be powerful and knowledgeable. And yeah, some women have more testosterone than other women. and those women were the ones with high IQs, so they're the most educated, the most articulate. They were the ones that said, uh, passed policy and got things going. They said, you and all of you other women are going to be like us. That's dandy if these women really were like that. But unfortunately, because of biology, our children need somebody to be there. I mean, what I've seen, sorry, I'm just going to keep going. What I've seen with um, kids who are not supervised... You know, uh, teenagers who are not supervised, they really don't have the impulse control and, and self-control of adults. They just don't have it. Plus, they're surrounded with images and beliefs and ideas that says endless amounts of happiness and pleasure are just awaiting you if you push this. So what, what my kids are told is that they're all drinking, they're all hooking up, they're all taking various forms of drugs. There's a line of drugs out there that are are absolutely unbelievable new ones they keep bringing up every um they're getting stis they're they don't there's no such thing as the future and they're doing it because there's nobody on the ground just physically being in the home with the kid is an inhibiting presence even if i don't do share any wisdom or shape anybody's virtue or or, or but they also when you're there they talk to you mm -hmm. And a big part of being parenting human beings is just letting them talk and talk and talk and endlessly talk. And then coaching, that's your job, yeah. but it's a job. Yeah. And you cannot have a career. Careers demand your all. They are 80 hour a week. They will suck up all everything you've got. Yeah. And you want that because if you've got the career and you've got more testosterone costing, around, I want that status. Career equals ego. Hannah Arendt said a lot about career in uh, Eichmann in Jerusalem. She said, no, the next threat for the modern world is not totalitarianism. The next threat is careerism. And women just bought right into that. 
<laughs> but isn't it interesting how the, the notion of the divine feminine and the sacred male have disappeared? And that would be a path in nurturing young people to help make them aware of the sacred in themselves, whether it's divine feminine or sacred male, mm -hmm. which could help build the bridge. But it sounds, not Pollyanna, but it sure doesn't sound like a practical strategy for addressing, you know, the challenges that we have. But there's a certain number of us that really believe mm -hmm. that the key to the shifts that we need to take on a very large scale will not be pragmatic. They're going to be emotional. And with that emotional base will come a connection that you didn't have before. A Czech psychiatrist called uh, Alice Miller, I'm not sure you've heard of her, she wrote a, a seminal book called The Gifted Child, or the Something of the Gifted Child. I never read it. But anyway, her premise was that what happened in Germany was the result of what she called poisonous pedagogy, which was a kind of uh, child-rearing practice that began in the 19th century in Europe, uh, which used extreme amounts of cruelty to get children to behave in a certain way. A certain. So she said that normalized cruelty because what you grow up with is the way life is, right? Like mm -hmm. that's just, and she said then it didn't, it didn't come as uh, an aberration. They didn't, they didn't reel in shock when as adults or as young as teenagers, Hitler's youth, they were told, well, we need to be cruel to all of these unfit people. Um, so it was because they were, you see what happens with child rearing is that it, you are preparing the unconscious of a child. The thing he does when he doesn't know why he do, does it, mm -hmm. the knee-jerk reactions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you're not responsive in there and loving him and saying, even though you're weak and dependent and completely unfit to be in this adult world, I'm still here. And he says, I want you. Why do I want you and not your substitute? Well, she's better trained than she is. Because I was in your body. Mm -hmm. Your smell, the sound of your voice, mm -hmm. Uh, these are familiar. Familiar means safe. When you're weak and, and unfit, safe is a lot. And completely dependent. The modern world loathes dependency. Sorry, this is great. About language. Dependency versus interdependency. Yes, versus independence. It's interesting to see the etymology, I mean, how language has changed. For now, for example, the word strong means good. Hmm. We talk about somebody's strengths and weaknesses. We don't talk about what's good in them or not so great. Uh, strong is not good. Hmm. Weak can be very good. Hmm. And that's what we have to choose. If we want things to change, we have to consciously and deliberately choose to self-efface and accept the, the discipline of the body, of biology, because there's a theology of the body in the sense that if you bring in your idea of the sacred female and the sacred male, um, the sacred is already in nature. It's also transcendent. It's both. Um, if we obey the body, the biology of the body will take us from selfishness to selflessness. If it, it will say, you know, I mean, we all experience this as a parent. When we became a parent, we go, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> No, no way. I can't be pr constantly prioritizing this person who who gives me nothing. I mean, the intellectual conversation is zip. You know, all I have to do is deal with his faces and and snot. And no, no, okay. and I have to, and, and I don't sleep for nine weeks. And it's fun the first time. You start hallucinating and you make jokes, <laughs> but eventually you, you don't think it's funny at all, and you don't, and you go. I can't. I remember when I, when the, when I had the second baby lying there, going, "This cannot be expected of me." <laughs> no, I don't know who to complain to. There must be a, a customer service board yeah. somewhere. But I quit this yeah. job. This job is no good. It demands so much self denial, mm -hmm. constantly putting yourself on ice, mm -hmm. and it's horrible. There's wasn't, no getting around it. Wasn't liberating. Hmm? wasn't liberating? It wasn't joy. It wasn't fun. And I wanted to go back to work. I wanted... Because what you get at work is so much aff affirmation. Huh. All eyes trained on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I am an authority. <laughs> you know, you're sitting there going, and, you, and it's, yeah. it's 
so hard to break the ego. Yes, but you're being wonderful in sharing what it was like for you in raising your children. But we mm-hmm. started down that path because we need to nurture children along a different method or way or heartfeltness or creating that safe space mm-hmm. so that when they get to be older, they actually have real connections with yes. other people. And the only way you can have real connections with other people is if you've been loved enough. And loved means it's a practical thing. It's not an, a feeling. As Dostoevsky put it in uh, Brothers Karmazov, love sounds like a dream and it sounds like a, a, it can be sometimes a wonderful feeling, but he said, love in action is harsh, it's horrible, it's awful. You will hate it. And that's what we did. We got rid of love. And because we don't like it. God isn't love. We don't want that. And it's demands on us. It's demanding on us. It's telling us. But if we don't, if we don't meet those demands, then the conscience does not grow, does mm. not develop. Mm. Because you extrapolate from I was loved, and my feelings mattered, mm. my needs mattered, even though I had nothing to give. Therefore, other people's needs matter. The earth's needs matter. Mm. Children are automatically in touch with animals in the earth. They talk to each other. Yeah. So they go, oh, yes, of course. And thank you for watching. Be good, have fun, love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.